Alright, so I actually do not have a copy of this book to show you. But again, you can just buy a copy of The Older Woman with your actual money. And, you know, have someone else buy the book for you. I don't, I don't care, but like, you should just buy a book, you know, and read it. So, spoilers, I guess. But if you're watching this... Let's be honest, you probably were never going to read the book anyway. <laughs> so it's kind of like Five Nights at Freddy's, where the majority of people that like the content have never actually consumed the content. And that's fine, I'm fine with that. A lot of people are very interested in my books who do not read books. And I think this would be very beneficial for them, especially after my events and stuff like that. <laughs> but the older woman is about Gabrielle Nearjet, and I would say it's primarily about Gabrielle. Uh, even though the male perspective is mentioned, it's primarily about Gabrielle. A recently divorced woman who falls in love with her daughter's ex-boyfriend. She's not aware, and it's like, there's a lot of, okay. So this is like, I've never like really promoted this book that heavy. Like, you see, like, it's not even that you see, but, like, some people see that, like, I promote certain books, like, really heavy, and I push it out there, invest money in it. I've never really pushed this book out there like that, like, at all. Because it's, like, I don't know, the place that, the place that I was at, I would totally fuck someone did something to bomb, like... <laughs> Like, no, like, no fucking, no, savage, like, I wouldn't give a old, young, see, you know, as long as it's legal, you know, like, if it got wet, I would smack it, like, I didn't give a shit. Um, looking back, I'm in a relationship, so I can't even be honest about those feelings. Do they disappear? No. Do I act upon them? No. And that's kind of the confrontation with reality that Terrence faces. That's something that Gabrielle's already got to go through because she's been married already. And while she would like to get married again, a lot of women have unrealistic fucking expectations, you know. So she's been lonely, lonely, lonely doing these like, group on classes and shit like that. And... You know, she's looking at her daughter, trying to fix her relationship, and having been through a divorce, she's just like, she's like, this is, like, weird, like, she's like, like, like you two are never gonna get back together, <laughs> like, it's like, it's like, never gonna work with your fucking, it's like, you're, like, your whole fucking frame of mind, whole, and it's embracing that, that, like, I guess, like, the Kevin Samuels is, is, and the Manish Spears is, 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 and all these other niggas. A lot of you motherfuckers just need to fuck older bitches and just call it a fucking day. Get you a sugar mama, call it a fucking day. You know? You can still work your job. You can still try to make more. Make that you're fucking weird. You fucking this old chick. Trying to make more money than her. That make that your fucking life's destiny. That before she dies of a heart attack from you fucking the shit out of her, you uh you started making more money than her by yourself or some shit like that. Uh, it's that kind of book. It is. And I'm not. I'm proud of it. You know, I'm not ashamed of it at all. But I just I never really knew the market for it. But I guess that is the market. It's kind of just older women because that's the book title. But then I also am in a relationship and it makes like advertising books like that like really kind of like compromising because I would be the younger guy and those would be and I would be advertising that situation to older women and it would feel like kind of like when you find out that a celebrity has kids and you find out like a super celebrity has a girlfriend or a wife and then it's like, oh, I can no longer lust after this man because he's married. But then you have to, like, secretly hope that their marriage fails. And uh, I avoided that entire thing by already having both people already be broken up. And what I kind of wanted to illustrate was, one, how do you know a relationship is over? And in the one sense, it revisits that a few times in the story. In which the very beginning, in which is addressed in Gabrielle's, like, hey, I'm gonna help you two get back together. Like, I would love to see you guys work out. 
to the middle of the book where she's just kind of like, okay, this one, like, the two of you are never going to, I want them, and the two of you are never going to fucking work out. So I got to fucking just snatch him, put you over here, and then I'm going to fucking fuck this guy in his apartment up for a bit. And then Sandy's still in her fucking shoes about, oh, I can get him, I can, because it's like young chicks want the guy, you know. Terrence is tall, Terrence is handsome. And again, he's a naughty and living in Urdu. You got a big, you know, it's like you got a lot of hyper-aggressive, really angry, misogynistic dudes honestly just have tiny dicks. And I would say it's okay, but it's not. But I would let you know, like, for women that are, like, get really tight in their pants about the manosphere. And a lot of these dudes need that kind of reinforcement because they got small dicks. And they need to hear that woman is shitty. They need to hear that it's anything else other than a tiny dick. Or a lack of money. Or it's reasonable for this type of, you know, type of shit to be that type of shit. Whatever. You know, I don't know. I don't I don't think like that. I don't fucking adhere to that shit. I find some of the shit ain't too fucking tainted, though. I'll be honest with you. Some of the shit... Because it's like... They point out some real shit. I think both sides point out some legitimate shit and this this book really tackles it from all sides or angles or I wanted it to tackle it from all sides and all angles you know because it deals with a divorced woman it deals with a divorced man someone he kind of makes an appearance not really and it deals with the other side of that the young generation that is walking into marriage walking into raising children and you have a young woman who has a great guy who wants to get married and wants to have kids with her and wants to spend his life with her. And she is not emotionally. She's so caught up in the idea of being more mature than him and being this more than it. She's not emotionally mature enough to be a team player and to acknowledge that she's getting older. And this is the new phase of her life, is starting a family. You got your college degree, you're going to get your career. Within three to five years, five to ten years, you're probably going to want to start a family. A lot of women are so obsessed with the liberal ideology bullshit, they're like, I choose not to have kids, I'm never going to have kids. And it's like... All right, I guess. I don't know. It's like, honestly, to each their own. You know, I don't know. I'm not going to fucking criticize someone for having kids, not having kids, whatever. But it's like, it's that generation. It's that kind of shit. So she wants the dude who has all the potential in the fucking world to be in this weird type of relationship that goes absolutely nowhere. While he is exhausting resources on her, paying for her, trying to impress her, trying to garner, arguing with this crazy bitch, and then trying to, like, maintain shit with her, while she knows good goddamn well she doesn't want to marry this man, or she doesn't want to get married at all, and it's just, like, a lot of women should just not date then you can't expect a dude to spend 200 or 400 dollars on a date with you and then you ghost him and then you're bragging to your friends about ghosting him or you got a dude that will do anything for you and you treat him like shit and you take pride in how shitty you treat your man while he keeps doing good for you and keeps doing right by you you're going to meet a chick like Gabrielle, who's a fucking boss chick savage that just spots fucking talent. Motherfuckers that hire people, no talent. She sees the motherfucker. And she's like, damn. It's like the very first chapter of this chemistry, the very first chapter that they meet. He sees Gabrielle and he's like, that's why I was fucking your daughter. Was, everything on your body right there is why I was fucking your daughter. And you got you 
got more of what I was wanting on her, and it's on you, and it's better on you, and then you got more maturity, and then you got your shit together, and you still got the fat ass, and some titties, and you can make babies, and oof, uh, your daughter, you, your daughter, you, Stacy's mom has got it going on, it's like, Sandy's mom's got it going on, man. It's like some of these old chicks are, like, bad, bad. And it's like, I remember being, like, 16, wanting to fucking older chick, like, 50, 45, like, 60. Like, easy, like, no shit. Like, I'm, like maybe that's, like, being way too fucking honest with you. I don't know. But, again, like, I, big, I think I said this video, the last video, one of those fucking videos I told you, being a fucking dude, having testosterone is very different than being transgender being a woman or some of this other fucking shit. We're going to say completely fucking I remember being like sixteen, wanting to fuck like older woman. And it's like you're eighteen, twenty legal. It's like I would definitely explore the idea and I would say maybe a lot of the problem it's like it's kinda of borderline like pedophilic though. And it's kinda of creepy to date someone twice your fucking age. So that means like when they were twenty you were just born. Maybe it's less creepy. Maybe it's less creepy if, like, when you were born, they were still somewhat of under 25 or under, like, the age of being, like, a full-ass fucking adult. And this nigga, if, you were, if he was 50 when you were born, that shit, that motherfucker's a pedophile. I don't care if you're 18, that motherfucker's a pedophile. <laughs> I mean, that nigga's 70, like, no, that motherfucker's a pedophile. I mean, I think it was a full adult praying on your ass from birth, nigga. Like, he's breeding you for fucking sexual intercourse. No, fuck that. Fuck that. I would say if they were under the age of being a fucking rational adult when you were born, chances are once you're over a legal age, you can fuck the shit out of them, and they would not mind. They would probably be very happy. And it's like in the new tide, I would feel as well, because I was thinking at this time, it's like, I was like, I think I was about 22 or so when I wrote this book. That's what I kind of felt like. I felt like I was like, I have everything I could like really offer a woman. I don't have any fucking, I don't have any fucking money. I don't have any fucking assets. I don't have any fucking investments. I have no means to any of this shit whatsoever. I'm like on the complete other side of my financial potential entirely. And then you meet a woman who's just wants companionship, but then you offer to get her on top of that, and you guys can still have kids, and you guys can still have a functional relationship, and then she already has a kid, or two kids technically, because you were fucking her other daughter, and now you're fucking her, and then chances are you probably keep fucking the daughter, honestly, like... Shit, they're Mayan. Like, I hate to say it like that and be offensive, but they're Mayans living in Earth. They're going to keep some part of the culture. Like, you can probably tap both. I don't know. I never wrote the sequel to it. I never wrote a sequel because I didn't want to answer any of these questions. You know, and it's like, does Chris keep having. Does, uh, I'm sorry, not Chris. Does Terrence keep having sex with Sandra? I have no idea. I'm not in a business like that. Does Gabriel get back with Levin? I don't fucking... I'm not in the fucking... No, probably not. Gabriel and Dr. Wonderless, that actually is answered. Gabriel and Terrence are still together. Uh, I do not mention them ever again. Terrence also makes an appearance inside of Best Friends. Yes, that is the same person. But if you never read The Older Woman, you would not know that that was a cameo. You would just think, oh, well, this random guy makes an appearance and he's never there again. No, that random guy had an entire book of his own. And then he made a cameo appearance inside of that book. Oh, man. Older Woman was a really fun book to write, especially the sex scenes, because it's just... I just think of many of the older women that I... I would be attracted to. Even now, the quick porn hub search of some wolf porn or something like that. You know, women, I, I mean, again, I feel like you gotta have a real, like, I feel like you have a, like, a real little dick like, to think that just because a chick is over the age of 50 
or 40 that she's not attractive. Like, like either you get so much pussy that you can turn down a big booty 45-year-old that's ready to twerk on your tongue, you know. You, you're just like, nah. I got Cindy and Lucy and all these other girls after this. I'm not doing this today. I don't need this. Nah, man. Like, fuck that. I fuck up my whole life. Fuck up my whole life trajectory. Fuck up my whole existence with some shit like that. Slim waist ass, fucking 45 year old. Fucking bust that shit wide open for you. Crazy at your ass. It's fucking. Yeah, once a girl turns 30, her sexual marketplace value fucking declines. Eh. No, it's because, nigga, once you turn 30, you motherfuckers start balling and shit. You know, people don't want to deal with fucking childish shit no more. Uh, uh, Nick's bitter. Terrence ain't a bitter motherfucker, though. I would say Levin's not really a bitter dude either. But this book... It's kind of like anti MGTOW in a lot of ways. It's anti feminist and it's anti MGTOW. And that's why I loved it and that's why I wrote it. Because essentially, Chris is the archetypical attractive man, intelligent, not as intelligent as Chris. I'm sorry, maybe Terrence, I meant to say. Terrence McCoy. Terrence the real McCoy. That's who he is. Terrence, I'm not real McCoy. Tall guy, handsome guy, cute guy, blah, 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 blah. He's a guy anyone fucking really want, honestly. Hiding with his own pack of people. He's hanging out with Chris. You know he's hanging out with Maya. He's other, he's other beautiful women around him. He's hanging around with Opal, hanging around with Maya, hanging around with fucking all their friends and shit like that. Hanging out with the fucking guardian of air and shit like that. He's literally, I'm sorry, let me, let me this book... Terrence, I'd say this is two appearances of Jared, actually. Jared is the literal, actual roommate of Terrence. So that's like, that's the level of what this this woman, this girl had, is that she was dating the dude who is literally living with the guardian of air. You know, the most life-changing experience that freaking Chris ever had in his life was just touring with Jared. This guy lives with him. You know, probably way, no, not probably, definitely way closer than Chris ever was to Jared. She's dating this guy. She doesn't want to get married to him. If you, like, it's like, because I'm in, oh my God. It's like, it has to be frustrating. Because then it's like, it brings up that idea that, like, you got women who blah, 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 this, and they would kill for this, this, and that, and the, the, the third. And I'm not going to justify it. It's glorified pornography. I would say all my books are glorified pornography. If you find the meaning of life in my books, I'm very flattered, and I'm very happy, and I'm very appreciative. But I, I would definitely say that they are glorified pornography in a lot of ways. Um, I wanted to write some MILF porn. I was into it. I was, like, heavy into it back then. I always kind of thought I would end up with a woman, like, older than me or something like that. Uh, I didn't. I would say that my partner's definitely way more mature than I am and has her shit way more together than mine is. But she's younger than me, and I'm the older person. Uh, But... I had a great fucking time writing the book, man. I had an amazing fucking time. It was like, dude, that shit used to get me off, off. Like, oh my God. It was so, this is a scene in the car. And then she, like, buys some lunch. And she's just like, hey, can you just, like, scratch this itch real quick? Yo. It's a great book, man. I might, I might work on the book or something just to have an excuse to read it again. Because I'm remembering it now, like, no older woman was an amazing time writing, for real.